The latest iteration of the R-Style boost gauge includes a push to connect fitting on the back of the gauge. Begin by assembling the gauge and the pod at a workbench. Remove the two outside screws as shown using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once the two screws and washers have been removed, discard them. You will not reuse them for the installation. Lay out the hardware from the install kit bag. You'll have one bracket, two threaded standoffs, two washers, and two screws. Install the supplied lock washers and threaded standoffs in these holes. Using a 6 mm wrench, tighten the standoff. Do not over tighten as these can be easily stripped. Plug the supplied electrical harness into the gauge since it is difficult to reach after the installation into the pod. Feed the wire through the front of the gauge pod, then press the gauge into the pod and rotate to a level position. Place the bracket over the back of the gauge and use the two remaining screws to secure the gauge in the pod. A long Phillips screwdriver will make this easier to reach. Split the harness housing back about 6 inches to allow more wire adjustability once we install this in the vehicle. Once the harness has been pulled back, trim off the excess housing. Once the black housing has been removed, crimp the supplied ring terminal to the black wire. This gauge has an LED light which can operate at two light output levels. We recommend installing it at a dimmer setting for safety reasons. To do this, you will install both the red and white wires to a switched 12 volt source. Here we are twisting the two wires together for install. This kit incorporates two push to connect style fittings one on the back of the gauge, and one that will end up inside the engine compartment. Using the boost gauge tubing, it simply pushes into the end of the fitting. To release, depress the blue ring. You will be installing the boost gauge tubing into these fittings later on in the instructions. Here we are working on the driver's side front of the vehicle. Remove the rubber plug in the front of the driver's door frame. Once the plug is removed, punch a small hole through the center of the plug with a sharp tool. Remove the cover panel from the dash end fuse box and remove the small foam plug from the front edge of the opening. Pull back a small section of the door seal for easier cable routing. Install one end of the supplied hose in the push fitting on the back of the gauge. The tab on the pod slips between the dash end and the pillar trim. There is a small cutaway next to the tab for the wire and tube to exit the installed pod without getting pinched. The wire and tube 
are routed and tucked along the end of the dash to the fuse box for a seamless installation. Use a soft plastic interior tool to prevent damage. The pod slips all the way forward to the windshield for best fit and stability. Once the harness has been routed to the fuse panel, reinstall the door seal. Your kit includes two 15 amp ATC power fuse taps, one full size and one mini, and a tool free wire connector. For models through 2004, the full size fuse will be used. The 15 amp fuse for the 12 volt power socket is one of the best choices to access switched power. There is a list and diagram on the inside of the fuse panel door. On the car shown, this is fuse 13. Remove the original fuse. We are using a test light to find which side of the fuse socket is powered. The left side is powered in this example. You should provide protection for the gauge circuit by putting the wire tap on the unpowered side of the fuse. If you install the wire on the powered side, the gauge will not be fuse protected. Now install the supplied full size fuse tap. Unscrew the halves of the tool free blue connector. Twist together the red wire from the fuse tap and the red or red and white wires from the gauge. Slide the ring portion of the connector over the twisted wires and screw on the cap to lock them together as shown here. Your kit includes two 15 amp ATC power fuse taps one full size and one mini, some extra extension wire, and some tool free wire connectors. For 2005 and later models, the full size fuse tap will not be used. The accessory fuse panel for 2005 to 2009 is located above the driver's feet, behind the bolster, and is accessed by removing the two Torx 25 fasteners. Once the lower bolster has been removed, you can now see the lower accessory fuse panel shown here. There is a fuse list and diagram in your owner's manual. In this vehicle, there are multiple switched fuse sockets that are unused. We are using a test light to find which side of the fuse socket is powered. The top side is powered in this example. You should provide protection for the gauge circuit by putting the wire tap on the unpowered side of the fuse. If you install the wire on the powered side, the gauge will not be fuse protected. Once you've located a switched power socket, install the supplied fuse tap with the wire on the bottom. Unscrew the halves of the tool free blue connector. Twist together the fuse tap wire and one end of the extension wire. Slide the ring portion of the connector over the twisted wires and screw on the cap to lock them together. Pass the extension wire up through the dash so that it comes out alongside the upper fuse panel. In the upper fuse panel, twist together the end of the extension wire with the red or red and white wire of the gauge and secure with another tool free connector.
use a 10 millimeter wrench to install the black wire ring connector on the bolt at the front of the dash end panel opening. Feed the loose end of the tubing through the small hole that has the foam plug removed and then arc the tubing to the left to come through the hole in the door frame where the rubber plug was removed and pull the slack through. Run the tube through the hole that was punched in the rubber plug and slide the plug up the hose. Then reinstall the plug in the body opening. After you've installed the rubber plug back in the door frame, don't forget to reinstall the foam plug at the front of the fuse panel. Fish the tube behind the fender to come out under the hood. Don't tangle the tube around the door hinge when pulling the boost tube through. Pass the tube under the bottom plate of the hood hinge. There is a small space to pass through here, but it is difficult to see from above. Make sure you don't tangle around the hood hinge or strut. The best boost source is the small hose at the rear end of the intake manifold. Simply cut the hose a couple inches back from the clamp. Then install the supplied T connection and hose clamps. There are multiple ways that the tube can be routed to the manifold. In this install, we are following the wire harness to protect the tube after install. Cut the excess tube and push the tube into the T-fitting. Now that everything has been connected, start the car to ensure the gauge is working properly.